Hi Abhik, how are you? Uh, hello, uh, good evening. I'm fine. Uh, how are you? Good. Thank you for asking. So can you tell us something about yourself? Okay, so my name is Abhik Nak and uh, I belong from Ranchi. I have completed my uh, graduation in uh, BCA, Bachelor's in Computer Application. Mm -hmm. And I have been working in uh, TCS uh, for uh, since 2019, and I have been working as an automation tester since then. Okay, okay, great. So, can you tell us something about the automation framework? What is the flow of the automation framework, and what contribution have you made in that framework? Okay, so uh, basically, I work on two projects, and the previous project which I worked on, uh, they used UFT. My contribution to that was uh, the, the the automation framework was already made. The scripts were also already created. I I was there just for the maintenance part, so I did maintain a, a good number of test cases there, and we used UFT and VB script on that. And the current project which I am currently working in, uh, so there is uh, there has been a, a 50 50 percent of my contribution. So mm -hmm. basically, we use uh, J unit for the reporting. And uh, we also uh, like we we have uh, the uh, data driven uh, framework basically. Mm -hmm. So we uh, we give the inputs uh, from Excel and then we uh, generate the report uh, using J. And uh, the entire framework uh, it was also made by our senior team members. But uh, the reporting structure which uh, which I am talking about uh, some tweaks and uh, uh, the uh, entire project what we are doing uh, that dependencies are uh, made by me. Basically, the reporting part uh, is done by me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Uh, have you ever faced element is not clickable at point exception? What can be uh, the major yes. cause? Yeah. Okay. So, what can be the major cause when you get this? Okay. So, uh, uh, so two two causes which I have seen is that uh, sometimes when when I click on a particular uh, uh, button, so the page uh, uh, page is loading. So what happens is the page loader gets in front of the element which I want to click. So then uh, at that particular time uh, the element is not clickable. The exception is thrown, and also I have seen that the uh, error is thrown when uh, uh, when the uh, button is present uh, at the down at the bottom of the page and it is not uh, like I have not scrolled it. Mm. So uh, it, it, then also sometimes the exception is thrown. Okay. Any other instance when you are able to, you know, judge the one of the, uh, any other causes behind this exception? Yeah. So uh, there are also other causes like uh, sometimes the ID gets changed. Sometimes uh, maybe the XPath which I'm using might be because just because of the ID got changed uh, or the element is not, uh, uh, you know, visible by the web driver. So the element is not clickable or uh, exception is thrown. Mm -hmm. Okay. See, there are five major causes of this exception, right? One is web element to be clicked is disabled or web elements overlap with each other. Or it might also happen web element is not yet available or it is not loaded fully on the web page, right? Then failure in locating web element using maybe they have used coordinates on the page, right? So that's how these kind of exception will come. Okay. Now, I'm asking you one uh, scenario based question. Okay. So let me share my screen. Is my screen visible? Uh, no, not yet. Not yet. Yeah, it's. Uh, it's visible. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's visible now. Okay. Now I have, uh, you know, Amazon site, right? And I have registered a test. So what I am doing is I am basically creating a script of searching, eleven iPhone, right? And then coming to a page of full products, right? So I am getting this XPath at times. Span contains text, Apple phone, 11, 64 GB black, right? Now today, if I use this XPath, then tomorrow it cannot work because tomorrow again, it will get changed. It will get changed to this particular thing. Span contains text, Apple phone, 11 Pro, 64 GB space gray, right? So what changes you will make in your XPath or what changes you will make in your locator to make sure that you are going for a reliable locator? 
do you want to see the website also let me open that also. Uh, yes, yes it, hmm. it would be nice hmm. see now i'm opening the amazon website is it visible uh not yet yeah it's visible see i'm searching iphone 11 and this is coming as the first right apple iphone 11 64 gb but sometimes the xpath is getting changed it's a dynamic kind of an xpath so uh, uh, this is where uh, so uh, you need to click on the first uh, hmm. product itself right correct, correct so tomorrow this might be iphone 12 or something else right so product will be here but the xpath might get changed so let me show you that okay. xpath hmm. so xpath are getting changed so yeah so this is the xpath okay so today let's say it is span contains text apple iphone 11 64 gb black tomorrow it might change to this particular xpath right so which is when your script will get failed so how will you come up with a reliable xpath with a reliable locator okay. uh so uh so do i need to use the text uh only or can i use anything else you can use anything, but the expert should be reliable. Okay, so uh, I, I would suggest that uh, I would be using the ID of the particular product if, if uh, uh, the text is getting changed because the ID won't be changed for the uh, for, uh, for the product, right? Hmm. Okay, uh, so, so that is one of the case where uh, mm -hmm. as of now IDs are not there, so you will request a developer, you will raise one ticket for them and you will... Mm -hmm tell them that you need id for automation purpose but by that time we so, need to and one more thing if uh, if you need to uh, click on the particular iphone 11 if you are searching for the particular iphone 11 then what i can do is uh, i can use contains text and just iphone 11 uh, no specifications will uh, mm -hmm. so that that may also uh, be helpful mm -hmm. right right that is also one of the option any other thing and, uh, uh, so I see uh, Apple iPhone 11 64 GB is constant. So uh, only the, uh, the the color is changing, right? So uh, color uh, and this I, text pro. Yeah. So yeah. So I would be using iPhone 11, and uh, so I would be using uh, some kind of regular expressions to just uh, uh, to just you know. Uh, Display iPhone, uh, Apple iPhone 11 uh, and the uh, variant that I want, like 64 GB, uh, but not uh, maybe Pro and whatever it is. So what kind of regular explanation uh, you are telling? So uh, I might be using a backslash maybe mm -hmm. or uh, uh, a percentage maybe. I, I Actually, I have not used uh, regular expressions mm -hmm. in uh, recently. So... Uh, but I would be using the uh, uh, asterisk, uh, the percentage sign. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, fine. I'll I'll tell you. See, you can use index and following expert to get the first element, right? Yes. Okay. This is how you can use. But again, see, this is not reliable because you are going for mm -hmm. class, right? So yes. we will request developer to get some, uh, you know. IDs or names, unique ID or name for this particular mm -hmm. element. But for the time being, you can use index because you want to go for first, right? Okay. And this particular class. Okay. Now, hmm. okay. Now I'm sharing my screen. Okay, is the Amazon website visible to you now? Yeah, it, it is visible. Mm -hmm. So what you have to do is you have to launch this particular website. Click on shop now link, right? So can you find the XPath for this particular link? Uh, yes, uh, so uh, I would go to right click and inspect element. Mm -hmm. then and then uh, uh click on the mouse uh, that the the arrow button in the left corner and uh, oh. click on shop now mm -hmm. yeah so i can use uh, uh if if i can uh, I, I would first check 
Mm-hmm. Okay, so it has a shop now button, right? Uh, mm-hmm. I mean shop now text. So uh, I would use at that it contains text uh, shop now. Mm-hmm. So uh, asterisk double slash. Mm-hmm. But and then uh, so you are going. Contains... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. Please go ahead. Yeah. So uh, asterisk double slash and then uh, at that it contains text uh, uh, text uh, shop now comma shop now in single quotes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now see, you are using text contains shop now, right? Let's say tomorrow mm-hmm. this particular website is getting changed to Chinese or Japanese language. Internationalization mm-hmm. has been done, right? Then this XPath won't work. Shop now won't be dis- uh, visible, right? Then what you will do? Okay. So, uh, can you scroll uh, the uh, uh, can you scroll a little up and uh, maybe I, I would be finding an ID. Uh, which would be closest to the shop now. So yeah, so I do have the ID uh, in the bottom. Which one? Uh, uh, scroll a little down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, I can take this ID and then uh, traverse up to the particular element. Desktop yes. grid? Desktop yeah, grid. But, yeah. yeah, but it is taking you to the next link. Yeah, so I would use the ancestor, uh, uh, mm. the ancestor class, uh, mm. uh, with which uh, you know I can uh, traverse to the uh, beginning. I mean, to the uh, element before this particular element. Mm. So I would be using the ancestor. So, can you tell us uh, what kind of XPath you will be developing with the help of uh, ancestor? Uh, what kind of XPath? Uh, mm. I would be developing a, re- a relative XPath. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so is it possible if you can, uh, okay, so you have joined from Mumbai. So is it possible if you can just speak up how that ancestor will be there? Okay, so, so ancestor um, type XPath. Hmm. Okay, so the entire XPath, right? Hmm, hmm. Yes. Okay, so uh, uh, so uh, asterisk uh, double double slash and then at the rate ID is equal to desktop grid key. Hmm. And then... Uh, I would close. Uh, I would. I'll close the uh, uh, the particular ID and then use uh, colon and mm-hmm. then ancestor. Um, uh, ancestor is equal to the uh, div. Uh, so the second and then uh, to the uh, go scroll up once. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's a right. So uh, at the rate a is uh, no, not a. It's span. Mm-hmm. So I uh, I would go to the a and part. Button. Yeah, uh, because it's uh, I would need to find the uh, exact ancestor of this particular div. So uh, can you uh, can you uh, 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 can you uh, like uh, close the expand in the div? Yeah. So uh, and scroll up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Uh, so this is the uh, yeah. So this this div. Hmm. So this is the ancestor. Uh, so desktop grid two, right? Hmm. Okay. So I can I can traverse from here also. I can okay. use desktop grid two also. Yes. So uh, yeah. So at the rate ID is equal to desktop grid, and then uh, uh, single slash uh, div, and then scroll down, please. Uh, so one div, and then uh, okay. So uh, div and then a and then again uh, div. So I would be using that. Okay. Okay. Now I'll also show you the XPath. Hmm. Okay. So let this be an open question for the people who are watching this video. We will be putting the relative X path in the comment section of this video, but what will be the relative and reliable X path for this particular shop now link, which we had just shown on the amazon.com page. Okay. Now a big moving to you. So um, let's say you have three more members in your team, right? And one of the person is having less experience than you. He's junior professional junior it professional compared to you right now he is writing code and your responsibility is to review his code right so which are the major things that you will consider in the time of code review 
um okay so uh, two things are coming right out of my mind uh, that are comment lines uh, comment lines why because uh, uh, until and unless we write comment lines uh, when we when we uh, open the code after say maybe one month uh, for maintenance purpose then we won't be knowing which xpath or which id or which uh, line which code line was written for what purpose so from from my personal view i uh, use a lot of comment lines just to make sure that the person who is uh, opening the code uh, he should understand what what is the flow what is actually happening in the application and the second thing is uh, 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 i restrain from using absolute expats mm -hmm. so like if there is uh, so uh, if i use uh, say suppose id so id will be more reliable than an ex absolute expat right mm -hmm. so these two things are coming right out of my mind and uh, um, yeah like these these two things are coming uh, right then you can also review whether that particular team member has used the common methods let's say if you have some common method of mm -hmm. reading data from the excel file he is mm -hmm. using that particular method only or function only mm -hmm. he's just passing the parameters or arguments he should not be reinventing the wheel from the scratch yes. right then what kind of assertions they have kept hard assert soft assert have they mentioned variable names, classes name, function name, meaningful, right? So that is also one of the aspect you can, uh, you know, review. Yes, yeah, so, uh, I did remember. Uh, so whenever I uh, used to, uh, I whenever I declare variables, so I uh, declare them. The name starts with the uh, variable type. Like if I am uh, declaring a double type, so I would be using DBL, and that is what I say. So yeah, uh, that that also yeah. uh, is uh, required. Right, right. So that is their data types. And then apart from that, uh, let's say if they have enabled uh, some kind of, you know, code analysis tool, which is analyzing the tool and they are giving you, you know, some kind of suggestions, some kind of uh, uh, feedback in improving the code quality. So is that being followed, right? Or is those, are those things being ignored, right? So th that is also one of the aspects that you can do in the time of code review. One more thing is, let's say if there are multiple conditions in one particular method, then what is the approach they have kept? Have they used if else? Have they used switch statement? Which is better? So it depends on scenario to scenario. So that's how you will review the code. Okay. Have you worked on other testing like ETL or performance testing? Uh, no, I have not worked on ETL. Uh, I only worked on uh, like uh, performance testing just for a week or two, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, not, not very uh, like viable experience. Okay. okay. I use JMeter, but uh, not. Uh, okay. So in JMeter, uh, how did you, uh, you know, automate the login of the website? Because you will have to log in into the website to recognize the pages and to perform the, you know, time to measure the response time of the pages being loaded. So how did you log in via JMeter? Uh, how did we log in? Uh, we, we used uh, parameters for that. We used to send parameters from the inputs uh, input files. And then uh, we did have the Swagger URLs and we did have the APIs uh, uh, which were like sent from the developers end. But uh, to be honest, I do not have the exact idea uh, because it was only seven days or uh, like two weeks we worked on that. Okay. And then we, we didn't. But uh, slight ideas about the assertions also were there. Like right, right. where to put assertions on. Right. So username, password, uh, credentials are fine. But in order to authenticate, you will have to generate a token. So for that, you will have to collaborate with the development team or someone who has handled or who has developed that login mechanism. So they would be able to tell you how the token mechanism is working, right? So you will have to place some variable in your script, which will every time, which will dynamically, which will capture the dynamically generated token and it will allow your parameters to log in into that particular website, right? Okay. What is bean shell assertion in JMeter? Uh, sorry? What is bean shell assertion in JMeter? Uh, uh, no, I, I do not have the idea. Okay, okay, no worries. Um, 
university. Now, in your resume, it has been mentioned that you are driving the effort to discover new strategies and tools for testing product infrastructure, front end and back end. So, can you please elaborate the statement? Can you please let us know how are you driving? Uh, uh, can you come again? I, I didn't get the first part. Okay. Okay. So, in your resume, it's been mentioned that you own and drive the effort to discover new mm -hmm. strategies and tools for testing product infrastructure, front end mm -hmm. as well as back end. So, what kind of tools you have, uh, you know, brought in your team or in your organization as a part of testing product infrastructure? Okay. So, uh, uh, as I said, like uh, I did, uh, uh, just a second. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, the charge uh, I I need. That's fine. So okay, so as I said, like uh, I've done some, uh, I've done the work on reporting structure of uh, the project which I was working on. So uh, basically, what we did is uh, the entire the entire project uh, we we validated through uh, different uh, uh, like different on different pages, right? So uh, the uh, like we had uh, like two report generations. One was the uh, J unit part. And one was the Excel part. So the the total Excel part, where the uh, what data we are using, uh, what uh, what uh, like um, what different sets of uh, uh, you know the assertions we are using, what different validations we are using. That entire part, the entire uh, report was uh, generated by me. And uh, also, uh, like uh, we actually use uh, uh, basically we use in in-house tools uh, which are pro uh, like uh, provided to us. So uh, a little tweaks on that, like. Uh, where to put uh, the uh, reports, where to put on the, uh, the you know, uh, the Excel files, where to put on the input files, where to put on the output files. Uh, that is what uh, I've done. Okay. And any other tool or technology that you have brought in, in place? Or, you know... yeah, uh, like, uh, like from, uh, like, uh, from created from scratch, are you asking about that? Yeah, yeah, created from scratch. Uh, no, uh, we, we did not create from scratch, but, uh, we did have some, uh, discussions about, uh, like what, uh, uh, like, as I said, like what, uh, you know, uh, manipulations we can do on the, uh, like on the already made framework so that our project requirement requirements can be met. So that is what, uh, we did like, we, uh, like we, I did not, uh, uh make a tool from scratch, but, uh, a little adjustments to the previous ones, uh, which we already did. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So you are using Java as a programming language, right? Hello? Ah, uh, yes, yes. Yes, you are using Java. Okay. So can uh, you tell me about the exceptions in Java? Which are the different types of exceptions and what is the hierarchy of that exceptions? Which exception will uh, come first, which will come down? Uh, so exceptions, are, as in when we are using script with Selenium, that exceptions, uh, is that what you are asking, right? Uh, no, no, not those exceptions. I'm talking about uh, unchecked exception, runtime exception. Okay, right? okay, okay. Yeah, related so, to uh, Java. Hmm. Okay, so one exception uh, that uh, frequently comes uh, like when we are running, so that is the Java null pointer exception. So, uh, so that is again that is... related to Selenium automation, null pointer exception, right? What are the exceptions in Java? So again, you have throwable, right? then you will have a runtime exception, you will have unchecked exception. So what is the hierarchy of that particular exceptions? Sorry, I, I not at the end. Okay. okay, no worries. So let me share my screen. I'll show you the hierarchy of the exceptions. Yeah. Is the screen visible? Uh, a hey. little bit, maybe you can make it a bit, little bit bigger. Bigger, yeah. Let me check. Is it readable now? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I can read it. See, there are... So again, every time in the object, you will have throwable. Now, you have got exceptions. One is a runtime exception, 
unchecked exception, right? Another is checked exception, and then you have got errors, right? In unchecked exception, you will get null pointer exception, index out of bound exception, number format exception. In checked exception, you will get IO exception, class not found exception, socket exception, SQL exception, right? So this is how the hierarchy of the exceptions are really there, okay? These are uh, these are all under uh, Java, right? So these are not Selenium exceptions, right? Yeah, yeah. So some see if you use Java, right? So you will get this null pointer exception that you are mentioning. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you might get index out of bound also, mm -hmm. right? So those are again the number exceptions. format is also uh, sometimes when we are trying to put the string into something which is not a string, so that is yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Why do we use protector and how is it different from Selenium? Uh, pro protector. Hmm. Uh, I have not used protector. Uh, okay. okay. So protector uh, is generally working on the Angular JS web application testing, right? It can identify advanced HTML attributes. It can also perform cross browser testing, right? So those are that is protector. It will help you in identifying and testing web elements using the attributes right so protector is nothing but it is used as a wrapper over selenium web driver for angular for end to end testing of angular based web applications right okay okay abhik i am done with the interview do you have any questions for me yeah so i do have questions like um uh so whenever i go to the uh interviews like different interviews so uh uh, this part uh, will this part be also like in uh, we are in YouTube channel, like yeah, yeah. So we are recording it and it would be uploaded okay. on YouTube channel, right? So you okay, can fine. so uh, yeah, yeah. So the there are uh, so there are different questions about uh uh like a, a POM and DOM, right? And uh, so basically, what we are doing is uh, may a question comes from Maven. So like, what is Maven and all? Because uh, we do use Maven Maven libraries, yeah. But uh, uh, whenever I work on my, uh, like whenever I work, so on, in my framework, the exact Maven, like the Maven uh, commands are not used. Like we only, uh, what we do is uh, we have made the uh, different tests, like test.java. We uh, run them and we execute them. Okay. So like my question, my doubt is, uh, how do I explain this? Like, how do I explain the framework to, uh, if, if like you are asking to me that what, what framework am I working on? How do I explain the framework? Mm -hmm. So when they ask you about framework, so you have to give a detailed answer and you can take five to 10 minutes for explaining just the framework. See, what is the first thing in the framework, which programming language you are using? Then how you, what kind of framework? Is it page object model? Is it a data driven, keyword driven framework? Is it Cucumber BDD framework? What kind of framework? What kind of files mechanism is there, right? Then what kind of folder structure is there? You might be having one uh, utilities folder. You will be having one mm -hmm. common scripts, common folders. Then you will be having one test data related folders where you might be keeping some files, for example, right? Mm -hmm. And if your application is using license to make it up and running, so you would be keeping, you would be dumping those licenses somewhere. So what is the structure? What is the folder structure, right? Then coming to the framework itself, what where is the base class kept? What kind of mechanism you have used? How do you read the URLs of different environments which you are using for testing? Do you keep them in the properties file? Do you keep them on the cloud? Do you keep them hard coded within the framework? So this is all you have to explain. Then you will come to the reporting structure. You are using extent report. You are using by default test ng reports what kind of reporting mechanism you are using. Then how do you trigger the automation? Are you using Jenkins? Are you using Azure DevOps? Are you using some kind of DevOps tool, CI, CD? Or is it just a manual for now? Or is it being triggered using batch file of Maven, right? So that's how you have to explain framework in detail, each and everything from where it is starting, pre, sorry, prerequisites from where it is starting and then up to the end and the final portion. Right. Then so so yes. whatever we are doing, uh, like the entire entire folder folder structure mm -hmm. and whatever files we are having. So okay. everything, everything you have to tell. The more you will tell, the more they will be confident of on hiring you. 
ओके राइट ओके ओके अभी थैंक यू सो मच एंड विश यू ऑल द बेस्ट फॉर योर इंटरव्यू एंड वेन यूवर यू गेट एनी क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम द इंटरव्यूज जस्ट राइट दैट कंपनी नेम एंड सेंड अस एन ईमेल सो वी कैन कवर द वीडियो ऑन दैट राइट okay fine thank yeah. you and uh, i do watch your videos and uh, like uh, from many years so uh, uh -huh. I, i i wanted to have a chat or uh, an interview with you so thank you for like uh, replying to me and thank you for this interview thank you so much for okay. subscribing our channel what kind of other content you would like to see on the channel uh so uh, basically whatever i need from you i like uh, from your channel i do get that but mm -hmm. also uh, uh, like if from my end i would be uh, like different uh, courses like small videos which would be you know uh, giving different courses okay so uh, do you like uh, do you have any courses that you provide are there any courses that you provide no we don't have any courses but we can create videos so what kind of courses you are looking yeah, for yeah so uh, like uh, i would say uh, for people who who like you know who want to start uh, their career maybe in automation so from my perspective because i uh, i joined as a fresher so i would say uh, like the detailed part in in different parts like in two or three parts say you can like you know um, uh, say like how to make a framework how, how to make a, like how to automate a page so that kind of videos you can you already do kind of that kind of videos but uh, yeah like you can create yes yes okay and your interview videos are uh, like uh, it's uh, it's very good like i i uh, like i watch them uh, Yeah thank you thank you so much Abhi and wish you all the best for your career thank you thank you